Vi ska nu bestämma den hydrauliska konduktiviteten. Vi vill nu bestämma den hydrauliska konduktiviteten. Det är en parameter som beskriver den möjlighet av akvifer att konduktera vatten. Det är definierat av Darcy's lag, som är en basisk relation i nästan alla kalkulationer av grundvattenflöd. För att göra det jag startar det cirkulationssystemet och skapar en slöpande vattentabell. Jag lägger på en sida. Jag sänker vattennivån utanför grundvattenmagasinet. Jag mäter flödet som går genom akvifern. På den andra sidan är vattnet pumpat. Water is pumped to keep a constant level. After a while, the water table has stabilized, and we have a sloping water table, and the flow is now seen. To determine the conductivity, I have to determine the flow, the slope of the water table, and the cross-section area for flow. I start by measuring the flow. This is, of course, not possible to do in a real aquifer in this way, but here it works quite well. I measure the time needed to fill a certain volume of water. I measured 120 milliliter in nine seconds. Now I measure the groundwater level in two observation tubes. H1, 12.7 cm above the table, and H2, 9.8 cm. To get the thickness of the groundwater zone, we have to subtract the height of the aquifer bottom above the table and this is 1.5 cm. We obtained a hydraulic conductivity of 1.2, 10 to minus 2 m per second, which is a high but realistic value for this coarse sand. A close look at the water table shows that the slope is gradually increasing in the direction of flow. This can be explained by the Darcy equation. The groundwater flow, Q, is constant along the flow, K is a constant, but the cross-section area for flow decreases as the water table becomes lower. To get the constant Q, the slope has to increase, or rather become more negative along the flow. For determining the ability of a real aquifer to conduct water, one can make a pumping test, which I will do now. I have a well at the opposite side of the central tube, from which I can pump water by lowering a tube connected to the tank. By measuring the flow and the drawdown in observation well at different distances from the well, the storage coefficient and the transmissivity can be estimated. The transmissivity expresses the ability of the whole groundwater zone to conduct water. Mathematically, the transmissivity is the average hydraulic conductivity multiplied by the thickness of the groundwater zone. Now the pumping has started and a cone of depression is developing, with the water table sloping towards the well. It can be seen that the water table is falling faster and recovers more slowly on the left side. It is because the intake filter on this side happened to be a little clogged, so the water supply from this side is smaller than from the right side. We can see it as a less permeable material near the left border of the aquifer. By analyzing how the groundwater table in different directions is affected by the pumping, a skilled hydrogeologist can provide information on the geological boundaries of the aquifer. For instance, if there is an impermeable boundary or a direct contact with the lake. 
In this model, I can create an impermeable boundary by closing the water supply completely on one side, which I now have done on the right side. Now the drawdown is larger on the right side, since this side has no water supply. The difference is very clearly seen during the recovery in this two-dimensional aquifer, in which all supply now takes place from the left side.